Hello, citizen. If you just need to watch the mining tutorial, you can skip ahead. But if you're interested, today I have a story to tell. It's a tale set in the year 2948, and it's based on Matt's journal as he recalls the day that would change the rest of his life. All, of course, with a little help from his good friend, Sharkbait. Begin new journal entry. Document number 2948.12.1. Dear Future, I'm writing to you on a very special day, but it's not like one of those fake special days, like when suddenly the entire day just becomes special because I tried a new cargo route or dared to put some extra hot sauce on my bowl of Big Benny's noodles at lunch. No, rather, today marks my first day of an adventure that will completely change my way of life. No more waiting around for contracts to show up at Port Olisar, and no more sitting around at the metro station waiting for the commuter train to arrive in Lorville. See, instead of just waiting around and then spending the rest of my day transporting cargo back and forth, I'm going to be plunging myself into the middle of dangerous asteroid fields, and carefully landing my ship on planets that are far from being inhabitable by any human being. And I'm doing this all for the sake of discovering and collecting the next big mineral cache. That's right, today I fly the Prospector, and I begin a new way of life by mining amongst the cosmos. So it's been exactly 527 days since I first started doing cargo runs with my Aurora, and I've made exactly 894.5 runs to all sorts of destinations across the Stan system. By the way, that .5 comes from that one trip that I tried to make to some hydroponics farm on Daymar, but I forgot to check my quantum fuel before jumping. I ended up just getting stranded. Then I had to spend almost half my profit from that run just to pay the guy who came out to rescue me. Anyway, yesterday was the last day that I'd ever have to spool up that Aurora's quantum drive for another cargo run ever again. And today marks my first day with earning pay using mining. As of Thursday, at the International Aerospace Expo, I finally struck an affordable deal with a MISC dealership and got myself a prospector. In fact, I'm in the ship right now. I'm currently traveling in quantum space on my way to Hurston, which is not only the home of Lorville, but it also happens to be the home of some Golden Age strip mining facilities that have long since been shut down. I should think this is a pretty smart move as a first time miner if I do say so myself. But I'll also admit, I'm not exactly well versed in operating this kind of equipment either. I mean, handling a basic cargo box during my runs is a lot different than handling a high energy mining laser, which rumor has it, can cut through the hull of an aurora like a hot knife through a stick of space butter. But you know, that has to be true, because let me tell you, the aurora is definitely shaped like a stick of space butter. Anyway, I should probably get some help with this new ship. I'm kind of kicking myself for saying no to that free instructional mining presentation Misk was giving next to the showroom floor, but everything was just such a blur after I put down my down payment on the prospector. You know what though? I think my friend Sharkbait knows a thing or two about this kind of stuff. Maybe he can help me out. Hey, this is Sharkbait. Hey, Shark. How's it going, man? Dude, it's Matt. I'm doing great. How are you? Good. Actually, I have a prospector, and I'm heading over to Hurston. And as you probably know... Dude, that trip is going to take you an eternity. I just did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to take me a while, so I just wanted to burn some time. What's going on with you? Uh, nothing much. I'm just waiting for a friend here at Hurston. But did you say you had a prospector? Yeah, actually, this will be my first time trying it out. Dude, I just did some mining yesterday, and I have a video on it. Do you want me to send it to you and we can do some tips and tricks? Oh, that, that'd be awesome, yeah. Cool. Let me, let me find it and I'll send it to you. Hang on. Did you get it? Uh, yeah, I got it right here. Perfect. Just hit play and I'll walk you through it. Awesome. Cool. Welcome to Sharkbait's tutorial on the Prospector. This ship was designed and built for one exclusive purpose. Mining, of course. In this universe, mining consists of the following steps. First, scan for your mineral deposits then break down the rocks, extract the minerals, 
and then sell them on the market, all while making sure that you don't get blown up by rock fragments or attacked by pirates. Your first step is to scan for the mineral deposits, and you're only going to find them in two places, asteroid fields or on the planet's surface. To start scanning, press Tab to open the Prospector's unique scanning system. Do note that while other ships may have scanners as well, the Prospector is the only one that can successfully find mineral deposits. Now, once you've opened the menu, hold down left click to charge the scanner to 100%, and then release left click to send out a signal. Don't worry if you don't find anything right away. Unfortunately, these rich deposits can sometimes be very few and far in between. Yesterday, it almost took me 10 to 15 minutes to find my first deposit. But you'll know that you found one when you see a three-dimensional box appear on your display around the area of the deposit. Then, just navigate your craft toward the area, and you can choose to do the rest of your mining suspended in the air or landed on the ground. Just make sure you put down your landing gear first. Once you're in position, press M to activate mining mode, which brings your mining arm into position. Now that the arm is out, hold your reticle on the rock until the circle around it is complete. Then, let the prospector's computers scan and determine the mineral percentage in the rock that you found. The rock should have a yellow outline, indicating that it needs to be fractured into smaller pieces. Now, at this point, it's your choice to decide whether you want to continue mining this rock or find a different one, based on the type of mineral that's there and its percentage. But, if you like what you found, it's time to use the fracture mode. Fracture mode is activated and toggled on and off using the mouse's left click. The power level, or laser throttle as it's called, is controlled by scrolling up and down on the mouse wheel. Now, out of all the steps in mining, this is definitely the most dangerous, and it requires a patient and delicate hand, because if the rock doesn't have enough energy, it won't split. But if it has too much energy, then it could explode and even damage the ship. Fortunately, there are a number of different sensors and display outputs to help you do this part safely. First, the two most important of these display items is your laser throttle and the rock energy level display. Your laser throttle is controlled by the mouse wheel, and it should only be pushed high enough to bring the rock's energy level up into the green zone. You'll notice on the right side, the fracturing sensor will keep track of the fracturing progress, and will only progress when the rock energy level is in the green zone. Once fracturing progress hits 100%, the rock will safely fragment. However, if your laser throttle is too high or it's on for too long, you'll start pushing the rock energy level into the red zone, and the overcharge sensor will start detecting excess energy in the rock. If you do end up in the red zone, either bring the throttle back down or drag the mining arm away from the rock. Before you start mining again, check the overcharge sensor. You may need to wait a minute for the rock to lose some excess energy. Now, I know this seems pretty easy, but it's actually harder than it looks. On the left side, you'll notice two other display items, instability and resistance. Instability describes the volatility of the rock. The higher the number, the more likely it is that the rock will experience random fluctuations in energy, making it more unpredictable when you're trying to manage the laser throttle. Resistance is basically the strength of the rock. The higher the number, the more energy you'll have to put into it overall. Now, technically, the last item for the fracture mode is that fancy looking energy transfer graph. It shows the energy state of the rock in real time, which might be helpful for predicting whether your rock is about to become unstable. For example, a smooth angled curve means that the rock is happily soaking in energy, while a jagged and sporadic graph means the rock is probably about to throw a temper tantrum. Anyway, out of all of these items to focus on, I think it's best just to keep your eyes on the rock energy level and that green zone. So, once you've successfully fractured the rock, the yellow outline should change to purple indicating it's ready to be extracted. If it's yellow, it just needs to be broken down further, so give the fracture mode another go. Switch to extraction mode by right-clicking on the mouse and moving the arm into position over the purple outlined rock. It should start scanning again, and it will tell you the mass of the rock fragment as well as the percentage of minerals within it. Again, now it's up to you to decide whether you want to extract that particular fragment or not. And for example, in this footage, it definitely was not worth me using up the last of my cargo capacity to try and extract a half a percent of corundum out of 318 kilograms of worthless obsidian. Definitely a poor choice on my part. Anyhow, just repeat the fracture and extraction steps until you've completely filled your cargo capacity. Then it's time to depart and head to the nearest spaceport to sell your load. In order to do this, you just have to travel to any major spaceport and find a trading and shipping console which is a blue-colored computer touchscreen, similar to the yellow ship retrieval kiosks. Once you're there, just select your ship and check the ship's inventory. This is also a good chance to evaluate how well you did. 
or in my case, how poorly I did. This happened to be my very first mining run, which is painfully obvious from the fact that 97% of my intake was just inert, useless obsidian, and only 2% was actually valuable. Oh well, it was my first time. It's also worth noting that the kiosk also says sell to refinery, which is a strange reminder that the prospector doesn't actually have refinery equipment on board, and you should know that the prospector does not have the complete mining package. That title belongs to Robert Space Industries' heavy mining capital ship, the Orion. This thing is set up with a fully outfitted refinery, tractor beams, mining lasers, size 7 defensive turrets, and even the same whole series compatible saddlebags just like the Prospector. Only instead of just four, it has almost a hundred. Now, this ship would be a space miner's absolute dream ship. But don't count yourself out just yet. My advice is to check around for organizations that want to specialize in mining. If you rub the right elbows, you might be able to find yourself with a group that's willing to pool its money together to buy one of these incredible ships. Anyway, with that aside, it's time to sell your recently acquired rock dust. But unfortunately, you'll probably have to turn right around and use your now recently acquired cash to refuel your thirsty prospector. So in order to do that, just park your ship at any landing pad at the nearest spaceport, hit F1 for your Moby Glass, then click the Vehicle Maintenance Services tab at the bottom, and once your hydrogen and quantum fuel tanks are filled, you're ready for your next mining run. So, I think that's all I have in this clip, but sorry the video was so long, man. Hey, no worries, Shark. Dude, this was super helpful. Thanks so much. You're welcome. You're gonna love mining. Of course, once you actually get to Hurston. Uh, yeah, actually, I think I'm about to arrive. Sweet. Well, it looks like my friend showed up, so I'll have to catch you later, but you'll have to tell me what you get. Okay, I totally will. Thanks so much, man. No problem. I'll see you later, dude. Yep. Bye. P.S. It's so great knowing I have a friend like Sharkbait who's got my back. I think I'm really going to enjoy mining, and there were so many things that came out this year in Star Citizen, I'm sure next year is going to be even better. And honestly, I can't wait for what's next.